Okay, hi guys, it's Domino here. Uh, I'm doing a video. My last one, I talked for about a good 15 minutes and none of the sound came through. So, if you can hear this, good, good beans, because I'm trying to get this Cam Studio stuff to work so I can show you this cool application I got for the Alienware M11X R2. Now, a little backstory, why am I using this application? Uh, because the Alienware M11X R2 has a problem with the, I wanna say, clock speeds and Optimus. Uh, in some games, and this is some, uh, I know Guild Wars is one of them, uh, you will get freezes. Like after five to 10 minutes of playing, you get a freeze, you get stuttering sound, the sound may just get in a stuttering loop. And you basically have to control escape or alt tab out, uh, control alt delete, and end the process, the game process, which will be not responding. And after this, uh, your NVIDIA card is basically disabled. You have to reboot the computer completely to get your NVIDIA card to come back. You can't, you know, escape out of this and then get back to whatever game you're playing. So this problem as far as I know, is not present on the Alienware M11X R3 or the R1. I think because of the way the R1 handles Optimus. And Optimus is just the graphics switching technology that NVIDIA uses. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, it's all good. Anyway, the fix. The fix for this little problem of ours is with a tool called EVGA Precision Tools. Now this is basically a controller for your core clock, your shader clock, and your memory clock. Uh, switch your core clock to 427. The default is 450. Now I know that this clock works for me. I don't get any freezes, lockups, anything when I switch my core clock down about 25 megahertz. Now you can do, I think, sync. I think if that's ticked, it will, yeah, basically sync just means that if you have multiple GPUs that it will it will carry them across. I don't think the M11X has uh, multiple GPUs, so I don't think you have to worry about that. But you want to look at this little option right here, apply at Windows Startup. You want to tick that little guy, unless you want to have to open this program up every time you reboot the computer. And that's a pain. Nobody wants to do that. I don't want to do that. So tick this, and you'll basically never have to worry about freezes, lockups, anything ever again. Now, I know a lot of people, they go down clocking. You know, I don't want to down clock. I don't want to, you know, what the heck. Um, I can tell you right now that the, the difference between 427 and 450 is minimal. It's not noticeable. You're not going to be, you know, it's not the difference between being able to play one game and, and not being able to play a game. I mean, Skyrim runs the same. I mean, I get the same performance on Skyrim. I get the same performance on, you know, all my other games. All my games run. I don't, you know, I'm not sitting here going, oh my gosh, I'm down clocked. I'm just it's so slow. You know, no, you're not going to, you're not going to have that happen. So don't worry. Um, yeah, this is the first part. This is the first part. Now this goes another way too. You can overclock uh, if you are feeling rebellious against uh, <laughs> against the hardware manufacturer. You can overclock just by dragging this little these little things up. Now, if you happen to do that, make sure you don't tick this. Apply it Windows Startup until you figure out if these settings are stable. Now, how do you determine if these settings are stable? Well, you're going to use an application called Furmark. Furmark is basically a GPU pusher, I call it. It pushes the GPU as hard as it can go, and it will basically tell you if your NVIDIA card is stable. If you can run Furmark for an extended period of time and not overheat, not you know crash or get artifacts, then you're doing pretty well. This is generally used as a, you know, are my settings okay? Um, let me see. I know one thing about this. It's going to say Intel GMA HD, but it's really using the NVIDIA card. Um, you may have to whitelist for Mark. Uh, but I don't think I had to. I don't remember, though. It's been a while. It's been a while since I installed this. Uh, that's basically it. 
Uh, overclocking the CPU is just as easy. Uh, you're going to want to go hit F2, I think. Yeah, you're going to hit F2 during startup. The minute you see that alien head, hit F2. And you're going to go in there and change your core bus speed to... I think it goes up to 166. Um, but my computer is not stable at 166. I have to go 164. Uh, basically, your testing mechanism for this is you start at 166. If you're getting crashes and blue screens and problems, go to the next level lower and repeat until you get to a spot where you're not having problems. That is basically it. That is my rant. I'm going to try and keep this short. I hope it hasn't gone over. Uh, if you have any questions for me, please leave me a comment. Please hit me up. I'm on the Twitter box, uh, twitter.com slash darkdomino. I'm also on the, the Google the, the Google thing, the Google Plus thing that all the, the, all the hip kids are, are using nowadays with their, with their low-cut socks and their, and their fancy shoes. So if you want to hit me up there, that's great too. Um, that is about it. Uh, yeah, as always, make sure you watch your temperatures. Do not let uh, do not set settings that are gonna overheat your stuff. Uh, that's probably the biggest problem of overclocking. Uh, just you know, watching your temperatures, making sure your system is not. Uh, getting to the point where it's about to have a thermal shutoff. And what is a thermal shutoff? A thermal shutoff is basically security measures put into the laptop hardware so that the GPU will shut down, the computer itself will shut down during a thermal shutoff. And I can get thermal shutoffs very easily just by closing the lid and running the PC through an external monitor. So... Make sure you're well ventilated. Make sure you have a cooling pad or a, you know, you get some compressed air and, excuse me, compressed air and blow out the back of it. Make sure there are no dust bunnies in the back of your computer that may be jamming up your fans and whatnot. As always, Dell will not void your warranty for overclocking in the BIOS. Um, I'm pretty sure they also won't void your warranty by using precision tools. However, if you have problems, they will not support you. Dell will basically say, okay, well, in order to help you, we're going to remove all your overclocking. We're going to remove all, we're going to go to default settings. And if it runs in default settings, they're going to go, okay, nothing's wrong. You know, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to. What, what, what am I trying to say here? They're not going to be sympathetic, let's put it this way, if you can't run your PC overclock. They basically don't support it. So if you're worried about voiding your warranty, don't, but don't expect to get any support from Dell while overclocking. Anyway, that is my rant. That is all I had to say. I'm sorry for not making more videos. I've been crazy busy with life stuff and school and just crazy stuff going on for the holidays and it's a new year in case in case anyone hasn't noticed it's a 2012 instead of a 2011 now which is great which is good i uh, hope to release some more videos and uh, i also have a kind of cheap m17x coming and I'm going to be using it to do some video editing and hopefully release some videos that aren't so, uh, what's the word, uh, sucky? <laughs> Is that the word I'm looking for? Sucky? Yeah, I'm hoping to release some videos with like some editing, like some sparkles or something, or some unicorns, or something that will make people go, ooh. Anywho, I will do an unboxing when I get my new computer. It's supposed to be here on the 20th. Hopefully, it'll be here earlier. I'm crossing my fingers. You can't see my fingers, but they're crossed right now. Um, anyway, as always, please leave me a comment. Like I said before, comment, Twitter, Google, the Google. Uh, hit me up there, and I can answer your questions. I'm not an expert, okay? I'm, I'm not going to claim to be an expert. I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, a, a genius, when it comes to this stuff, but I can look, I can look at this stuff and, you know, a lot of times I've seen, you know, the same problems that people are having and I can, you know, help out. 
And that's pretty much the goal. That's pretty much the goal of my M11X videos. I want to show people, you know, everything possible about this laptop. I want to show them how to do it. Um, I really love this laptop. I love the M11X. Uh, it has problems. It gets stubborn sometimes. It has issues and, and you have to fight with it. But it's a great laptop and I wouldn't give it up for anything. That's just me though. Uh, anywho, thanks for watching. Thanks for being subscribed. If you aren't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and make my day. Make my day because I need to have my day made by having people subscribe so that it isn't just me talking into the big empty void of emptiness. <laughs> okay, thanks guys.